Fly ball left field. Heredia is going back toward the wall. It did creep into everybody's mind. It's a two-run walk-off home run. Luke Williams. Yes, sir. How about this welcome to Philadelphia? Luke Williams walk off home run to beat the Braves. That was certainly one of those moments that, you know, a lot of people, including you, I'm sure will never forget. Yeah. I, I, I think it was one of those that you don't expect Chet. Honestly, it's um, it, it was pretty cool, but then again, that's what walk-offs are about. I mean, so many people try to do them and a lot of times it just doesn't come to fruition. That one was pretty special though. And, and partly because his family was there, the moment of the game, Eflin had pitched so well for six innings and the Phillies got him no runs. Uh, but to do it like that, um, you know, I'll be honest with you, off the bat, I thought, yeah, this is going to be an extra base hit, but I didn't think it was going to carry out of the ballpark the way it did. And, uh, you know, Joe said the same thing from the dugout. It is pretty sweet, though. I mean, that kind of stuff is pretty cool. Yeah, very cool indeed. So three straight walk-off wins last week, and then a Sunday shutout of the Yankees. I was there for that. What a great atmosphere. But then a trip out to the West Coast that has started with two losses to the Dodgers. I mean, I know they're a great team, but why have the Phillies struggled so much on the road the last few years? You know, it's a great question. I, I I felt it was more because of pitching than anything else, but that obviously hasn't been the case even on these two games. Uh, because pitching, to me, I mean, if you don't have a steady stream of starting pitching or the bullpen, uh, you're in trouble. I mean, particularly against teams like the Dodgers. You know, obviously, it's a mixture of things. I mean, against the Dodgers, these are two winnable games. They're two for 20 with runners in scoring positions. So that, to me, is the biggest fault in this particular series. But I think you can go back to the road woes the Phillies have had recent years. And every single trip seems to have a different personality as far as their, you know, what the games that they lose. And I can't put my, my finger on it. I really can't. Um, you know, the hope is, is that as this season continues on, that they, they figure it out. Because, you know, they're five out right now with the Mets playing as well as they are as crazy as that is with all their injuries uh but i can't put my finger on the road woes i really can't well one thing that's not helping certainly is injuries bryce harper left last night's game with back tightness he's not having a great year physically he's just 28 years old seems like one thing after another how big a concern is bryce harper's health i think the nagging stuff is probably a concern uh and i think it's a concern for him too because he put so much effort this offseason into making sure his back was solid uh so I think that's concerning for him. Uh, he he plays the game from a physical standpoint pretty hard. Uh, I know that, you know, when we watch him play in the outfield, he's moving all the time. I think his swing is extremely strong and violent. I don't know. I mean, it's the same he's always played. You know, somebody asked me today, does he need to back off a little bit? I don't know how you back off. I really don't. You know, I have a son who plays minor league baseball uh, who dove into the stands to catch a ball during preseason this past year, this past uh, preseason, hurt his foot pretty bad. And somebody said, well, he's got to back off a little bit. I said, I don't know how you tell him how to back off. That's my thing, Chad. I, I don't know how you tell somebody that plays that way, you know, that they have to back off the way, you know, I guess people would like him to, to a certain extent. You know, I, I think it's always concerning when you have nagging injuries like this. Chase Utley had them too. But again, it's the way the person plays. And now we'll see what happens with Gene Segura, who may have to go on the injured list. We don't know as yet. Uh, speaking of concerns, though, Reese Hoskins, who was so terrific in May, is just really scuffling here in June. I think he's 0 for his last 33. Is it just bad luck, or is he doing something different, or what? Well, I think it's mechanical in a lot of ways. I mean, and I say that only because of listening to Joe, listening to Ben Davis, listening to Ruben Amaro talk about it, Kevin Franzen. It's very upper body, which means he's, you know, he's kind of floating a little bit. I, I'm not a swing doctor to be able to tell you what, what's wrong and what he needs to fix. I will tell you this, that, you know, 0 for 33 is a long streak. You know, Ryan Howard was 0 for 35 at one point. Now he was at the end of his career, but he was 0 for 35. But the last few games of that season, he turned it around. The same can be said for all the others that went through these kind of funks. Joe Morgan, for instance, in 83, went through a terrible funk with the Phillies. He was you know, 0 for 35, I think it was, and or 0 for 36. And then he had that September to remember. So it will turn around. I, I, this is not anything that's, that's physical injury-wise. I just think he's in a really bad rut right now. We've seen him in these kind of streaks. Not this bad, but we've seen him in these kind of streaks before. I, I know he's frustrated. I will say oh, yeah. this. What I thought was actually pretty good, and, and he is this way. I mean, uh, you know, I love him as a person. He's a great kid. Yeah, you know, he, he sat up and talked yesterday after the game about it. I mean, he was, you know. He doesn't back off from it. Yeah.
Well, you and Ruben talked about this on the broadcast Tuesday night. The Phils have a pretty solid one, two, three pitching rotation right now with Zach Wheeler, Aaron Nola, and uh, Zach Eflin as well. They're five games out, I know, but will those guys, do you think, at least keep them in the NL East race? You know, I, I was thinking about this last night driving home. Um, it was obviously, you know, pretty late last night as I was driving home. They're in a danger zone right now. Five out with no thought of a wild card because of the way the East is. To me, they're in a little bit of a danger zone. Uh, yes, I do think they'd keep them in it. I do think that they have to find ways to win these games. You know, they, they're just not winning all of them when these three are on the hill. And I think that's the part that is probably a little concerning, Chet, that they have to kind of rectify. But, yeah, I think they'll keep them in. But, man, they're five out, hmm. and the Mets have a lot of games still to play. And um, it's it, it, we're getting to a danger. I, I thought, beginning with this national series, that, you know, the, that last homestand, that this was the best, biggest stretch, most important stretch for the Phillies. Um, and I still believe that. I know they're six and four during the stretch. It's the last 10. Uh, but they got to figure this out. If they can get a win tonight, against the Dodgers and then win the series against the Giants, then I feel a little bit better. Well, the bullpen, though, not as bad as last year, is still often shaky, including closer Hector Neris. Is he still the best option, you think, to close games? I think he is. And I know people probably, you know, look at that and say you're crazy. But, I, Chad, I I still think he is. And I have a few thoughts on it. Uh, I I just don't think Jose Alvarado throws enough strikes. That's my Mm. biggest concern. I don't think Connor Brogdon has enough experience. Um, and I think Sam Coonrod, as good as he's been, it's been a good acquisition. Uh, I still don't know if he can get in there and close on an everyday basis. Um, unless there's somebody else you can present to me to be in that spot, I just think Hector is, because of his seasoning more than anything else, is the most experienced guy that we have out there. I, but I will acknowledge that he's got to be more aggressive in the strike zone with some of these uh, innings, particularly with a three-run lead. Well, speaking of sticky fingers, uh, Tom, batting averages are way down this year, more strikeouts than ever. Part of that apparently because pitchers are cheating. MLB now will apparently be cracking down on that, 10-game suspensions for violators. Will this threat of disciplinary action change things, do you think? Well, I think it already has, only because of the chirping that's going on for the pitchers. You know, Steven Souza, who has just been added to the Dodgers roster, uh, sent something out on social media about the pitchers and the quote-unquote cheating that they're doing. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens when more hitters become vocal about it. Uh, Tyler Glass now from the Rays obviously is attributing his injury to the fact that he can't use any of the substances that he was previously allowed to use. Trevor Bauer talked last night, uh, and, and I didn't. I didn't read his social media post until after we talked about it. So then I went back last night when I got home, it was like 3 a.m. And I was reading all the social media posts saying that he, you know, was doing everything with rosin and sweat. Uh, I do think we're going to see a change. I mean, it's been a very subtle change, Chet, since the, the verbiage came out originally when people started talking about it, 236 to 247, you know, team batting average is up since that time. Uh, I don't know how drastic a change is going to be, but, the fact that pitchers are talking the way they're talking leads you to believe that something's that, that there is some truth to what's going on. We'll certainly keep an eye on that. Hey, next stop for the Phils, Tom, uh, out in San Francisco against Gabe Kapler's Giants. Is it possible Gabe is a better manager than Phillies fans might believe? I think he's getting better as a manager. I still think that his quirkiness as a skipper and some of the moves that he made uh, and some of the changes he made to personnel and what what he wanted them to do I still think that it was the right move to move on from him. Um, you know, he's a good guy. I mean, I, I always love talking to him. He's a good friend. So I'm happy that he's getting an opportunity. Uh, I think he's a better manager now with more experience. And I will say this, Chet. I mean, this is a no knock to anybody, you know, with the Phillies pitching staff. He's got better pitchers than he had with the Phillies. I mean, not they're not better than Aaron Noah, although Gossman is having better numbers than Aaron Noah, but he's just got better pitchers. Yeah. And I think that that's part of it. Plus his offense. I mean, they were down seven, nothing yesterday and they wound up winning again. Yeah. Again, it was against the diamondbacks, uh, but he's just got, he's got better personnel than he had with the Phillies. I think full bore across the board. And I think he's just more experienced than, than he was. Let's hope the Phillies can get back on the winning track. T-Mac. Great to talk with you once again. All right, Chet. Thank you, buddy.